Welcome back to Pattern Matching section, where we discuss one of the most powerful Scala features. I am Daniel, let's get right to it. So in the IDE, in the lectures package, we're going to create a new package, which we will call part4 pattern matching. And under part4 pattern matching, I'm going to create a new Scala application. Let's call this pattern matching just like that. Make this an object and extends app. So the first use of pattern matching is something like a switch on steroids. Watch what I'm writing. So say I am creating a random number generator and I create a new value called x very suggestively, which is the result of random dot next int. Let's cap this to the value 10. So any number from a 0 to 10. Okay. And uh, let's create a description for x, which is, and here's what I'm about to write. I'm going to say x match. This is a keyword and I'm going to open some curly braces and inside I'm going to put in some cases. So I'm going to say case one, error signed. And uh, the result of this is probably going to be something like the one. Case two, error. Let's call this double or nothing. You got the picture. So case three, let's call this third time is the charm. And finally, if you want a default case, you're going to say case underscore arrow sign something else. The underscore is called a wild card and it will match anything. So if I print line um, X and then print line the description, let's see what happens. So we have the number two and the description double or nothing. This expression right over here is called pattern matching. And a pattern matching tries to match a value against multiple patterns. And each pattern is written in a case statement. So case, pattern, arrow, result. So this pattern match expression looks like a switch from other languages. So you've seen a switch in Java and C or C++. But a pattern match is much more powerful. So we're going to start exploring the other use cases of pattern matching. The first very interesting property of pattern matching is that it can decompose values, especially used in conjunction with case classes. Case classes have the ability to be deconstructed or extracted in pattern matching. So for example, I declare a case class called person remember and I pass in a name which is a string and an age which is an int all right and I construct a little value called Bob which is a person with Bob and age 20 all right and uh, let's say I run a greeting and this will be watch what I'm running Bob match then open curly braces and I'm going to say case and instead of providing a value I'm going to provide a pattern and the pattern is going to be person with a name and an age I'm going to call these a little bit differently and an error sign and I'm going to say hi my name is n and I am age years old and uh, something else, which in this case is an underscore, and the return expression is going to be, I don't know who I am. All right, so something very simple. 
So if Bob is a person, this pattern match expression is able to deconstruct Bob into its constituent parts. So it's able to extract the name and an age out of Bob, even though the pattern match expression doesn't know them beforehand. It can extract them and it can use them in the returned expression. So let's print this out. Greeting. And let's see what we get. So we get, hi, my name is Bob and I'm 20 years old. This is amazing. We can not only pattern match against any kind of value that we want, we can pattern match against a case class pattern and extract the values out of an object, out of an instance of a case class. All right. So this is how you would decompose values with pattern matching. There's something even more powerful. We can actually run guards. So let's say I copy this case and I duplicate it above, but instead I also add, watch what I'm writing, if age less than 21. So this guy is called a guard and uh, the case statement will read, if Bob is a person with a name and an age and if the age extracted is less than 21, then I'm going to print, hi, my name is name and I can't drink in the United States. So what does this run to? It'll say, hi, my name is Bob and I can't drink in the US because Bob matches the first pattern. So a couple of things to write about this already. So first of all, cases are matched in order. So cases are taken in turn and the first pattern that matches will return the appropriate expression. What if no cases match? Let's try that. So let's comment out the underscore here with uh, our uh, incredible random number generator here. And let's get into, um, we got three. Let's get into something that doesn't match. All right, so we get this very cute little thing called Scala.match error with the value that didn't match the pattern. So the answer here is a match error. So make sure you cover your ass with wildcards in your pattern match. So that was the second thing. Third thing, what's the type of the pattern match expression? Well, it's the unification of all the expressions returned by all the cases. So in the description case here, the description is a string because all cases return a string. But if I had returned something else, so instead of something else, I return 42, the compiler will try to unify string and int. And the return type is going to be any because string and int are completely unrelated. So the compiler will try to unify the types for you and return the lowest common ancestor of all the types returned by all the cases. So the answer is the unified type of all the types in all the cases. All right, so a powerful tool. Another feature of pattern matching that's often considered, and this yields to a compiler warning, is pattern matching on sealed hierarchies. So say, for example, I have a sealed class animal and a case class dog, which has, for example, a breed as a string, and this extends animal, and a case class cat, which is, um, or let's say parrot. I'm sick of cat and dogs. So parrot, let's call this a greeting. The parrot uh, does greet somebody, and the greeting is a string and extends animal. All right, so this is a sealed hierarchy. So if I declare a val animal, which is a new dog, and uh, actually let's declare this to be an animal, and we instantiate this to be a dog with the breed, let's call this Terranova. All right then we can actually match against this animal with animal match. 
and the case dog with some breed. So again, this is an extractor pattern for a case class. Then uh, just print line match the dog. A dog of the some breed breed. Notice how the uh, ID was so happy for me to uh, turn my string into an S interpolated string. But notice that in my pattern match expression, I don't cover all the possible cases. For example, I don't use the case for parrot. So if I right click and build this or compile, the compiler issues a warning that match may not be exhaustive. So this is because the animal class is sealed. If I remove the sealed property, and compile this, I'm not going to get any more compiler warnings. So sealed classes actually help you cover your ass if you pay attention to it. Okay, so case classes are an extremely powerful use case for an extractor pattern on pattern matching, which is why I'm going to add a little note here that pattern matching works really well with case classes. That's because case classes, besides being so magical as they are, they also come with these extractor patterns out of the box. Your normal classes that you write do not come with these extractor patterns out of the box, so you need to add a little magic to them for them to be able to work with pattern matching. That is a subject for the advanced scholar course when we will talk advanced pattern matching, but for now, just rely on case classes. They're, they cover 99% of your use cases. Now, pattern matching is such a powerful tool that students who um, discover pattern matching for the first time start to seeing basically everything in terms of pattern matching. So they try to match everything. For example, I have this little X here that I've created. And they try and they uh, write code that looks like this. Val is even. And instead of saying x mod 2 is equal to 0, they try to match x. So they'll say x match case n if n mod 2 is equal to 0, and then they'll return true, case otherwise return false. This is way, way overkill. Why would you do that? This is a common tendency when you deal with pattern matching the first time, everything will seem pattern matchable. So return to your roots and actually use common sense. Now that we're on the subject with the true and false, I also see this kind of code, which is uh, something like is even, uh, let's call this cond. And people will write if x mod 2 is equal to 0, true else false. Why? No, just say val is even, normal, say x mod 2 is equal to 0. This is an expression that returns the boolean that you are after. But I digress. Let's run some pattern matching exercises. Let's say we have a simple class hierarchy. Let's say we have a trait expression, which denotes a math expression. And we have a case class number which has a number as a parameter, and this extends expression. And then we have two other case classes, sum, which takes two expressions, e1, which is an expression, and e2 is an expression, and this extends expression. And a case class product, which takes, again, two expressions, and extends, extends expression. So we have this little class hierarchy. So I want you to write a simple function that uses pattern matching and takes an expression as a parameter and returns the human readable form of it. So for example, if I say, if I take the expression sum with number two and number three, 
if I pass this through the function, I should return 2 plus 3. So the string. If I have sum with number 2 and number 3 and number 4, I should return 2 plus 3 plus 4. If I have sum with or product with sum, which is number 2, and uh, say number 1, and a number 3, then this guy will return 2 plus 3, 2 plus 1, times 3 because this guy is a product between a sum and a number. So I want you to insert parentheses as well. But if, on the other hand, I have sum of prod of number 2, number 1, and number 3, then the parentheses are not mandatory. So I want you to say 2 times 1 plus 3. All right? So pause the video and think through this exercise and write a, a simple show function that takes an expression and returns the human uh, readable string. Okay, so I hope you uh, give this exercise some thought. I'm going to write the show method here. This takes show, not shoe. This takes an expression and returns a string. Obviously, I'm going to run pattern match. Now, if I get into a number, number n, then I return that number as a little string. All right, I'm just using an s-interpolated string. You might use whatever equivalent expression you want. Case sum, let's call this e1 and e2. These are two sub-expressions. Well, if I get into a sum, I just call show on the first, show on the second, and concatenate them with a little plus sign. So I called show e1 plus a little space and the plus sign, concatenated with show e2. All right? This was also pretty simple. But in prod, things get a little complicated because I might need to show parentheses because um, either E1 or E2 might be expressions of lower rank than product. They might be sums. Okay, so I'm going to define a small method here. I'm going to call this maybe show parentheses, which receives an expression And depending on whether um, expression is a prod, a number, or a sum, I might or might not wrap the show method for this expression in parentheses. So I'm going to say exp match. I'm going to uh, put my case with prod first. And I don't care about the members of exp here, so I'm going to say underscore and underscore. Like I said before, underscores match anything. Then I'm just going to sh uh, call show with expression. All right. So I'm not going to wrap this in parentheses. Uh, number as well. So I'm just going to say number underscore, so number with anything inside. Again, I'm just going to call show with expression. But in any other case, I'm going to wrap these in parentheses. So I'm going to say open parentheses plus show with expression plus a closing parenthesis. And finally, as the end expression of this uh, case, I'm just going to show e1 and e2 possibly with parentheses. So I'm just going to call maybe show parentheses with e1 plus a little uh, star sign denoting the multiplication, plus maybe show parentheses with E2. And that, my friends, will be it. So let's uh, try to print show with all of these expressions. 
and print line show print line show with this little guy uh, but um, I'm going to put in another sum here number two number three okay because sum only takes two parameters not three then print line show of that guy and finally print line show with the final expression all right and let's see what we get so we get 2 plus 3 which is fine then we get 2 plus 3 plus 4 which is fine then the prod here which was our worst case our most difficult case prints parentheses which is fine and then the other expression does not need parentheses which is also fine if um, I want to be extra diligent I can actually put in a prod here just to prove that this works well if I say the sum between two products all right or actually it's the product between two sums oh yes 2 plus 1 times 3 times 4 let's make this a sum and this works well as well so 2 plus 1 with parentheses times 3 plus 4 with parentheses so this show method works well as expected well done so you've seen pattern matching in action. Join me in the next video where we will basically exhaust all possible patterns that you will ever need. I'm Daniel, see you there.